This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. Good evening. I'd like to uh, convene the uh, Tuesday, October 22nd, 2019 North Haven Fire Commission meeting to order. I'd like everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have a, a swearing-in ceremony this evening for uh, S. Gomez, Company 3, S. Four, uh, Steve, Steve, Stephen Gomez. Stephen, Stephen Gomez. Uh, Stephen, would you be kind enough, please, to step forward? You look good tonight, Steve. I'm really trying to well. <laughs> I tell you, he smells good. Jeez, he smells good, too. <laughs> I don't know where he's going after the meeting. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Stephen, be kind enough to raise your right hand and repeat after me. I solemnly swear or affirm. I solemnly swear or affirm that it will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the State of Connecticut. And the State of Connecticut. And the rules and regulations of the North Haven Fire Department. And the rules and regulations of the North Haven Fire Department. As written and amended. As written and amended. By the Board of Fire Commissioners. By the Board of Fire Commissioners. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. And impartially. And impartially. Discharge the duties of volunteer firefighter. Discharge the duties of volunteer firefighter. Of the North Haven Fire Department. Of the North Haven Fire Department. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, welcome to the board. Congratulations to walk the board. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you. It's always an honor and a pleasure for me, and, and certainly for this commission, uh, to swear in a new volunteer firefighter. And um, you know, I see uh, there representatives of Company Three that are here uh, to uh, to witness uh, the swearing in ceremony. And I'm sure Stephen, your your family is proud of you as we are, and we appreciate your your uh, uh, opportunity and time that you're going to spend. Uh, caring for the residents and the business owners and visitors of our town. Um, and we want to make sure that you and your family know uh, that our senior officers and your, and your senior firefighters that you're going to be working with are going to keep you safe and train you uh, to the best of our ability. So uh, we certainly uh, appreciate it. And on behalf of the residents of the town of North Haven and certainly the Board of Fire Commission, we thank you for your effort. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Moving forward, uh, I'd like to ask for the uh, approval of the minutes for the Board of Fire Commission meeting held on September 24th, 2019. So moved. Do I hear a second? Any question on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. The Chief's report. Can we take a five minute recess, you think, for a couple of photos? Absolutely. Any motion? I'd like to reconvene the uh, uh, Tuesday, October 22nd, 2019 uh, North Haven Fire Commission meeting. Um, I'm going to ask for the uh, discussion of the Chief's report. Thank you for the opportunity to, for the quick recess there. Steve joined us back in uh, May of this year. He's a North Haven resident. Uh, he's a young man, and uh, he's, he's got a strong future ahead of him. And, you know, Firefighter 1 is not something that, that is easily passed. It, I'm not sure what the, the failure rate of it is, but, you know, I'd say here we probably see 20 to 30 percent of members not complete that course so it's not just a given that that's a course to complete so thank you for that it's important that uh, he was recognized as far as chief report goes I'll start with the alarms the alarms 2018 at this time we we're at 3,775 uh, year to date as we stand right now 3697 it's a difference of 78 alarms uh, five years ago we had 3320 alarms a difference of 455. Uh, since our last Board of Fire Commission meeting hasn't been that many weeks, short interval of time, we, uh, we provided ALS intercept on eight different occasions. 
we had 19 responses to the highway. 65% of our overall calls were EMS related in nature. And there was one incident that we had a delay in responding to and one incident in which we were unable to respond to since our last meeting. In total, there are 367 incidents and 87 of which were overlapping, which is about 24%. That covers the alarms regarding the budget. Year to date this time last year, we were at 36.5%. Year to date this year, 33.2%. Since our last meeting, we've collected $2,984 in permit fees. That brings our total for this fiscal year to 184,308. Regarding the fire marshal's office, there were 30 inspections, six re-inspections for a total of 36. 14 code violations, eight of which were corrected. Uh, there was one arrest warrant filed for, one abatement order, and there were 18 plan reviews and permits. Uh, for training, since our last meeting, we were fortunate to have uh, the Delora Plaza donated to us for use on Washington Avenue before it was demolitioned. Uh, so we were taking advantage of that. You know, we, we really appreciate when a taxpayer or when uh, you know, residential or commercial for that matter, make their property available to us. There's some paperwork that's involved to uh, make sure that they're not liable for any injuries or anything that takes place. And uh, we really make the best of it. So that was a, a, a decent size structure that we were able to use and there was no hazards that were present inside like asbestos or anything. So we made the best of that plaza. And so we changed around our drill schedule a little bit to accommodate the opportunity that we had. So we focused a lot on engine company operations and search and rescue. We also focused on uh, some very brief tactical operations, having received the, uh, the tactical vests and helmets from a donation. So there was some preliminary training done with that. Over the last month, there is some more extensive training being planned for now in conjunction with the police department and what the concept would be for initial arriving police and fire and the actions taken. Uh, so that's going to take a little bit of time to prepare for it. And it looks like we've got another building that might be available for use that's going to come down soon. And so we'll, we'll probably be looking to use that. In addition, since our last meeting, uh, we were very busy with fire prevention. Uh, Deputy Chief of Administration, Mark, David Marcarelli, has been busy scheduling fire prevention throughout the, uh, the schools and various venues in town. And uh, something else we started to do was actually make site visits to properties and teach them on extinguisher training and so forth. <coughs> We're actually uh, rather excited. We've actually got a prop that we've ordered that's going to allow us to do some extinguisher training uh, for some of our larger businesses in town that have a lot of employees. So that's the first time we've ever purchased something like that, and we're looking forward to expanding on our fire prevention. Uh, so that's what we had for training. For executive session, I've got a few items that I'll defer to for that time, sick and injury, and a couple other things to discuss, and that's what I have for a chief report. Any questions of the chief regarding his report? Uh, I, I just like to say, um, no, and I, I don't believe it's part of, of, of training, but it's certainly part of the, the inspection process. Um, the company that I work for, the landing, um, had been visited by um, all shifts, mm -hmm. and uh, I was very impressed with um, the thoroughness of, of the um, uh, paid staff walking through uh, the entire building, identifying all of the nooks and crannies and uh, egress and, and uh, you know, fire equipment and uh, mechanicals. And it was uh, a lengthy um, uh, walkthrough of the entire building. And uh, what I witnessed in our building, I'm sure happens in other buildings. And it, there's a tremendous amount of time and effort in learning uh, the layout and design of, of different structures in town. Exactly. So, uh, I just want to say that uh, they, they did a marvelous job sure. in going through all of that uh, and uh, our senior management of the company and certainly all of the staff felt very uh, very good in the fact that the fire department uh, came through and, and gave us a thumbs up. So uh, you know, thank Got you. a lot of compliments on that facility thank also. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, they, 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 they were really, I think, in awe and I, I think as time goes by, uh, we'll, uh, we'll do some nice things for the fire yeah. department there. At the Very building. good. Appreciate but, it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Chairman, you bring up a good point. The, uh, all the buildings that, that we see going up in town, you know, we try to identify which of those buildings are going to have a high frequency of calls. In that particular case, a landing, we anticipate a high frequency of calls. We, we 
also look to see what the what the threat level is, um, what kind of what kind of hazards are associated with the building, and so those two factors play into uh, those. That's not part of an inspection. That's just company level familiarization uh, that we either incorporate the career staff and or the volunteer staff. It depends on the types of calls we anticipate happening there, but. The first time you're in a building is not going to be not desirable to be when there's an emergency taking place. So uh, it's important that we get the staff out there. And so a lot of the building that you see taking place, our staff is in it. They're in it either learning about the uh, what the building is going to be, or they're in there learning about building construction. I mean, that particular building there was quite a construction project, and there was a lot of knowledge to be learned by firefighters in terms of how it was being constructed and the materials being used and how it was put together, because that all attributes to fire spread. Well, again, I was impressed with uh, the questioning, uh, the, the thought process as to, you know, um, where the rescue would, would pull, pull up, where an ambulance would come by, whether it be uh, under the assistant living side or the memory care side, and what exit, uh, you know, they would, and so there was a lot of detail. Uh, so I learned a great deal in walking through uh, with, mm -hmm. with, uh, with each of the uh, uh, shift so uh, it, again, uh, you know kudos to you guys. It's really really worked out. Thank well. you Chief, I just, I just want to say one thing. I'm sorry uh, Mr. Chairman, I apologize. I was at the drills last week at the Laurels Plaza And the guys did a great job and Scott did a fantastic job running the training for the um, a Rescue I guess when you enter uh, Interviewed the uh, vest, introduced the vest, I should say, and the helmets, and how they dragged everyone out, to search and rescue to safeties. It really was impressive. I thought it was something fantastic. And I don't know how many fire stations around the area have that training or gear for that matter, but. Yeah, surrounding so town today actually did a pretty good size event at a building with their local police department, which is something that. That we're looking at doing it's just uh, we need to wait to get the equipment first which thankfully we have in large part uh, to the donations and yourself and your efforts and we'll look to uh, we'll look to schedule that training soon I thought it was fantastic yeah any other questions of the chief regarding his report here is I'll accept the motion to accept so move do I hear a second second question on motion all in favor aye opposed so move uh, correspondence any communications from any commissioners chief I have no correspondence from the department other than a routine day-to-day -day correspondence. Uh, I, I have one correspondence uh, that I was uh, asked to uh, prepare uh, after the last commission meeting. Um, I wrote a, uh, a letter to uh, First Electman uh, Frida, uh, dated October 11th. Uh, this is addressed to First Electman Michael J. Frida, Town of North Haven, 18 Church Street, North Haven, Connecticut. Dear Michael, Town Attorney Jeffrey Donofrio submitted a, a, a legal opinion as to naming town buildings in North Haven, Section 302F of Chapter 3 of the Town Charter and Chapter 4, indicating that neither the Board of Fire Commission or the Board of Selectmen have the power or authority to name town buildings. Chapter 9 of the Town Charter sets forth the power of the town meeting, specifically the legislative power of the Town of North Haven is vested in the town meeting. Section 109 does not assign power to the boards or commissions. Thus, the power to name town buildings belongs to the town meeting. As a result of a legal opinion provided by the town attorney as read, at the September 24, 2019 meeting of the Board of Fire Commission, the commissioners believe that the decision to name the Monowies Volunteer Fire Station by the Board of Selectmen was not in concert with the town charter. Therefore, the commission therefore directed that a letter be drafted by myself to request that at the next select uh, at the next special town meeting, an agenda item be listed to consider naming all fire department buildings after the retired chiefs of the department. On, the, on behalf of the Board of Fire Commission, we thank you for your consideration of this request. Sincerely, Pasquale Nozzolillo, Chairman of the Board of Fire Commission. So, um, per your request, uh, this letter did go out on October 11th. Uh, I have not heard uh, anything from uh, Mike Frieda regarding uh, the letter, and obviously this is not something uh, that will be acted upon until whatever the next special meeting is going to be scheduled. <clears throat> discussion of, a discussion of unfinished business of the fire department. Sure, a few items on your agenda this evening. So the, uh, the, the PSA <clears throat> hearings have concluded. Our fourth and final hearing was on October 3rd. Um, a reminder that all those hearing notes are, are FOIable and, and 
are available for review if you so choose to do so. Um, at this point, we, there have been uh, no further documents uh, that have gone back and forth, and the hearing officer has about 45 days to, uh, to make a decision. So that was as of uh, about the second week in October. So I expect to have a decision, I would think, by the end of November. Um, I'm confident that, uh, that we've put forth a, the best case that we could to, uh, to take over the PSA and just confident that, uh, that we you did everything that we could. At this point, I don't know what's going to happen. I, uh, I do think that it's going to go our direction, but I don't want to speculate any further than that. What I would anticipate is uh, if we are successful this first time around in a decision that there's going to be potentially some appeals that take place. And, um, you know, the appeals followed by hearing, followed by opportunity to file paperwork and briefs and so forth. We may not have a final answer to this until sometime next summer. Um, so I'll let you know as, as we move forward and at least keep you apprised of the dates and so forth as we, as we navigate through this next part of this. But we did a lot of prep work for these hearings, um, preparing for testimony and so forth, and we'll see what happens. Regarding the FEMA Assist the Firefighter Grant applications, we had two applications filed, one for an engine and one for uh, a replacement PPE. Uh, coincidentally, today I received notice from FEMA that they were both denied. So we, uh, we hung in there until the last, last minute, and it sounds like we had a competitive grant, but there were just others that were more competitive because we normally would get told no right from the start. This looks like we're in queue for an award, and they just ran out of money, and it went to other towns first. So that's unfortunate, and uh, we'll have to recollect uh, our thoughts and what we're going to do for, uh, for next year. But this is two years in a row now that we've filed for uh, an engine and haven't been successful. And, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that there's other towns in, in more need out there, and, and we have a hard time um, <coughs> comparing to other towns with, with what our financial need is. The, uh, the other thing that's going to make it difficult for gear next year is the, the gear is factored on the overall age of the PPE, of the firefighter gear. And we had a relatively low number this year <coughs> when you factor in all of the gear that we have issued. The Parker Hannifin fire that we had um, that we replaced a number of sets of gear, that's going to make that number come up. Plus, we replaced eight sets this past year with the, with the operating budget. So, you know, I don't think the gear is going to be something that's going to be worth putting in for next year because when you look at the overall set, our, our average number is going to creep up a little bit on us, not down. It's going to make it even harder to get. Um, so we'll have to just see what comes out as a high priority. I am supposed to go to a briefing with FEMA uh, in the next couple of weeks where they let you know what the high priority items are for, uh, for next year's grants. Regarding the training facility here, there's been uh, some preliminary drawings which I shared with the commission uh, last time we met, and we're working on finalizing some costs and some prices and talking to some local vendors to determine what their uh, their level of involvement you know, may be, and uh, I hope to have some, some answers for you soon. At this point, we're still working on the vendors since getting the plans last month. Uh, the state of our fire apparatus, engine two, which is the engine that was struck on a highway, remains out of service. I'm not even thinking about that returning to service until sometime around the end of this calendar year. Um, rescue 2, which was uh, the Ford, the backup rescue, has been out of service since our last meeting. It's, it's been out that entire time, and they're, they're working through, they're trying to track down <clears throat> some engine trouble. Uh, last I had heard a few days ago, they, they think they had found what it was, and they're waiting for the parts to come in, and, and we'll see if that comes back to us. But again, I something that, that we need to keep in mind is um, we are running our 30 plus year old engine right now as engine two because that was the only reserve apparatus that we have and I've got to start sending apparatus out for preventive maintenance for this time of year. This is the time of year we start doing that. We get the DOT checked and we get the pump certified and it has to happen annually. Um, you know, here we are in October, we, we started with the first apparatus. But as I said last, last month, we've just got to be prepared for something happening. Uh, rescue goes out of service, and we've got to use an engine as a rescue in, in that type of scenario where we don't have a lot of depth right now in apparatus. We never did, and we're, we're even short-handed now more so with, uh, with one more or less permanently out of service at the end of the year. 
So I'll, uh, I'll certainly let the commission know if, if, if it looks like it's going to be in a dire situation. We're not there yet. And I do think that if it looks like for some reason we had to, uh, we had to actually remove apparatus from a fire station, I would, I would want to get ahead of that and, and make sure the public knew that uh, what operational changes we had taken in order to, to accommodate that. But it is a possibility. We only have one engine, one truck here, one engine currently down at Mono East, and we're fortunate to still have two on the west side. But as we start trying to, I mean, we're, we're, we regularly right now have things that get run up on apparatus, and we have to wait to send it out until we get the next one in. And those lists just keep growing sometimes. So I'll, uh, I'll keep you up to date on that. If you think that uh, maybe we should consider ordering another engine. I yeah, mean, so we're kicking the can down the road, and what I don't want to happen, and we're, I'm sure we all agree at this board, we don't want to buy a vanilla envelope because we're strapped like we did with engine one that we have, that we've had nothing but problems with. And I think if we continue to wait and postpone it, and I know it's a big number, mm -hmm. I know it's a big number, and I'm not looking to minimize that, but I don't want to wait for the last minute where we knock out so much apparatus that we have no choice but to take whatever one they have in stock and try and retrofit it to accommodate this town. And it doesn't work, as we well know. Uh, so maybe it's something to consider that whether you go to the Board of Finance with a special request, with an emergency request, because it does take 12 months, as we well know, to get an engine. So maybe we could get by with what we have, and if we really lose one between now and the time of a new one coming in, we could lease one or long-term rent one from one of the other facilities and uh, move on. But I think we're going to need a second engine. And I know we got turned down with the grant in... Again, like I said before, we're a successful town. We're a well-managed town, and sometimes to be successful is to be punished. Sure. I'm uh, sorry to yeah. say that. I'm just watching an incident on the phone, Commissioner. I'm not trying to be rude. No, 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 of course you're not. got to watch something going on. So the, uh, I think that what we're trying to do right now to, to determine what our next steps are is, as we've always done, we're sending the, the, the oldest apparatus out first for preventive maintenance and for DOT checks. And that would be our apparatus that are all over 25 years old. And we have three of them that are over 25 years old right now. So the one that's down there right now is one of those apparatus. The intent that I have right now is, is let's get those three oldest through first between now and let's say the end of November. If, we, if they can get done that fast, which sometimes they can, sometimes they can't. Because again, when you're talking about ordering parts now for a 25-year-old engine, sometimes parts take a long time to come in. So my thought at this point is let's get the oldest apparatus through its annual checks first so that we kind of know where we stand. If one of those fails, like it did a couple of years ago with engine five, Correct. We're, then I'll really kind of know what we have to do. But I think right now it's a we need another engine. I just don't know how bad or how quick yet. And that's kind of going to be determined over the next few weeks as we get through the preventive maintenance checks. Oh. So I hope uh, by our November meeting, uh, we'll have one done, a second maybe done, and, and we'll really know where we stand. Well, I think I would give you a 100% go. If you say we need it, I think I'd back you 100% because I know that you'll know. Yeah. Chief. The person that hit the fire truck, isn't their insurance company doing, I mean, I know we had a tow truck hit once, and it was out of service, and their insurance company had to pay for us to lease a truck. Is there something like that that is? Yeah, so that's a great question. I've inquired with, uh, with our finance department if there was a, a lease option available right now in its absence because a lease a fire engine is between three and five thousand dollars a month, um, so I've I've checked into that to just determine if we ever had our backs against right. the wall, what, what our options are. Um, the, our our policy doesn't cover any kind of, of lease right now, so this is where it's just important that we build up our apparatus to the point where we have some depth to cover these types of incidents. And, and I've advocated for that for a few years now, and I think we need to continue to do that because yeah. things do happen. I think we need you to know, do it now. You know, two points, um, and, and Commissioner Piscola, you bring up good points, and, and, and uh, Mary Jane, 
Um, you know, I spoke to the chief uh, earlier this evening uh, asking um, about whether or not there's responsibility and liability on behalf of the, of the insurance company of the person that struck the truck. Right. Um, now, I know we checked into our insurance, and our insurance is saying that there's no rental reimbursement opportunity under our policy. And my question to the chief was whether or not we would be able to subrogate against the company that struck uh, right. uh, the vehicle, or is it insured the person that struck the vehicle. Um, and um, I, I think that's a question that we really truly need to investigate. I mean, whether uh, it means that the town attorney uh, needs to look into that. Uh, you know, we've been we've been um, hand uh, uh, tied. Uh, without this uh, with, uh, engine two for a long period of time, and the expectation is we're going to look at an, another three months or so, maybe even longer, uh, before we get it back. I think we need to investigate that um, to see whether or not we could, in fact, lease or rent an apparatus and um, subrogate against the insurance company uh, and let them pay the claim. Sure. Um, I don't know if that's... I'll inquire again. I'll, I'll put the wording a little bit differently to try to see if I can I can get a, a different answer. Yeah. Um, but I, the, the one time I've asked, I was informed uh, that it wasn't an option, but I can I can certainly look into it again. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And the other thing is um, the question uh, regarding the arrival of the new apparatus that we ordered. Uh, when do we anticipate that happening? That looks like it's going to be April to May. Okay. Um, I, you know, I, I was sitting here thinking about um, a couple of um, meetings uh, that took place uh, when we were in the process of requesting uh, to order that apparatus, and there were some residents that wanted us to wait because there was the potential of a federal grant coming through uh, and successfully uh, getting a, a pumper for free, uh, if you will, by the government. Mm -hmm. um, had we waited uh, for that to occur and we received the letter of denial today, it would have taken us a year from today if we ordered the apparatus. So, uh, again, kudos to you and your staff for ordering the apparatus and for, uh, you know, the uh, Board of Finance um, and, and Mike Frieda giving us the, the green light to go ahead and do so. Um, you know, I firmly believe that the leadership that we have in the years of, of experience of, of our senior managers on this, on this team um, certainly uh, guide us in the right direction. I believe that our residents that, that spoke against um, uh, ordering that apparatus had their, the best interest of the, heart, of, of the town at heart, but the truth of the matter is they're not firefighters. Uh, and they don't know what it takes and what the crapshoot was as to whether or not we would in fact get that grant, which we didn't get the grant. But we needed two apparatus then. That's we, correct, we, that's correct. We exactly, we yeah, needed yeah, that's correct. Whether we got the grant or not, yeah. <clears throat> and there were some persons that were saying, well, you know, you really want it too. And the truth of the matter is, and I answered the question, yes, we did want to, and we needed to. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and we need to because of what you just articulated. Mm -hmm. We have 25 and 30 year old apparatus that uh, are in need of repair and questionable as to whether or not they'll pass the DOT inspections. Um, and so what do we do from the public safety standpoint um, in the event two of those apparatus don't That's qualify? That's the thing, in the last, if you think back over the last exactly. uh, seven years, we've lost two apparatus <clears throat> to prevent maintenance checks. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Um, the old engine eight and the, and the, and the ladder. five. five. Yeah. How about so, the ladder? The ladder, it, it's, it hasn't lost yet, but I haven't but, sent it for an inspection yet. But we haven't sent it for an inspection. Doing it. So, but, yeah. But I, but I think your point is well taken. Um, you know, here we are, we're going to uh, be going through these inspections. There's no assurance that these apparatus are going to pass inspection. And, it, and you're saying, well, if one fails, we can limp along. If two fail, we're in trouble. Right. So, uh, and getting back to your point, uh, it, should that occur, we absolutely no, need to go to the town for an emergency purchase. Exactly. But again, we don't want to buy no. another apparatus no, that, that we're going to get stuck with. Exactly. Uh, a white elephant that's going to be nothing but a nuisance for us for the years to come. Exactly. That's why, should that happen, should that happen, I'm sure the board will agree, should that happen, we should not purchase a vanilla wrapper. We should lease it for the 10, 12 months. If it's three thousand a month, that thirty-six thousand is well spent because we spent probably over sixty-five thousand trying to retrofit the engine that we purchased, and it's still not right. 
So it's worth it to lease it from the experience and all the years that we've seen them, and we all have years on this board, all of us. That you that's what the it, current engine one that was bought as a demo. Correctly, right. we bought current engine one as a demo. It was undersized for the town. The gearboxes were not the right size. The hose bed was not the right size. The pump, was, nothing was right for this town. And Pat mm -hmm. is right. We have a senior management here that knows what they need. And I know some of the town's people think that. Well, we'll wait. Well, you can't wait. And even if. We get the parts, which is a 30-year-old vehicle, 30 years old, if they even still make that part, and if we do get that part, and it does pass inspection, is it as safe as a five-year-old vehicle, all the safety factors that have been put into the vehicle since then? <clears throat> of course it's not. If you had a 30-year-old car, it may pass inspection and motor vehicle, <clears throat> but does it have the safety features, the airbags, everything else? So it's not fair that... The firefighters should be in a 30-year-old vehicle because it passes inspection, sure. but it's not as safe. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I have concerns right now over the operations Yeah, because so. with the, the limited engines we have in service, uh, at this point, we're a one-fire town. What I mean by that is we can handle currently one structure fire. And anything else that's coming in, I don't have a whole lot of apparatus left to send to it because, you know, it's, so it's not only... It's not only the apparatus and the number of apparatus, it's how many seats I can get in those apparatus to get bodies to a fire. And every engine's only holding four to six. And I'm down to one right now at Mono East, which means I can only get four to six volunteers out of Mono East right now. You're right. Well, it looks, uh, it sounds to me like uh, we, we need to um, wait until we see what the results of the uh, DOT inspections are and the safety inspections of the existing vehicles. Hopefully, they pass and it buys us uh, a bit of time. A little bit of time. Your points are well taken. Certainly a 30-year-old vehicle doesn't have the safety uh, uh, components to it that a five-year-old uh, vehicle would exactly. have. Exactly. Uh, but, but again, I think the most important part is, as, as, as the chief indicated, you know, from, from the operational standpoint, we, we, we need to have apparatus to be exactly. able to respond. So um, I think, uh, uh, again, we, we, we need to wait and see what happens as far as the inspections are concerned. Uh, but we still are in need of replacing these old Exactly. Engines. We should have a plan in place. Well, I think, I, you know, I, the chief I know has spoken to, uh, you know, Mike Frieda, and Mike Frieda is thoroughly aware, uh, and Ed Swinkowski, of, of our situation. And we have always been trying to get by with what we have. Uh, but we're at a point now where potentially that's not going to be able to be done. So uh, again, let's uh, let's we'll see. Yep. Let's see. Let's see what the results are of the inspections, and uh, I think all of our comments are well noted. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Excellent. the comments. Thank you. Um, Next item I have on your uh, for unfinished business is just a quick recap of the Boy Scout Explorer program. Uh, that's open to both uh, males and females, and it's something that we have a, a high degree of interest from our current membership to serve as mentors for. They've, uh, they've met, they've done some training that the Boy Scouts required, and we're working on uh, putting together some rules and regulations for the group to, to abide by. And I have already met with the uh, high school principal, and I have a meeting with uh, the guidance counselors uh, this week, actually, to try to talk about the fire service as a career path. I think that's important. I think that's something that you know, may not be in the, in the mindset of a, of a lot of... Uh, a lot of our youth out there right now, and I, and I think that by starting with the guidance counselors and making them aware of, of the, the career path that the fire service can provide, both in terms of medical and fire, and as well as when we start incorporating um, the Boy Scout program into our department, uh, we're talking about doing some, some kind of hands-on demonstration as there are lunch periods there to really <clears throat> build up the interest and, and get a and get a good program going here. So uh, it's, it's continuing to work, and, and I'll have some more news for you for that shortly. And that's what I have for uh, unfinished business. You know, uh, one last thing uh, regarding unfinished business. Um, I want to thank you, Chief, uh, you know, for your effort uh, and the town attorney's effort uh, with the uh, with the PSA um, uh, discussions and, and meetings and um, all of the testimony that has gone, uh, uh, you've gone through uh, in that process. I know it was a laborious task. I, I know it was, uh, you know, um, uh, took a tremendous amount of your time to prepare uh, with the town attorney uh, to make sure that all of the 
appropriate documentation was in place and all the testimony was there. Um, and, and I want to thank you for doing that. Sure, in large part, that's Deputy Chief Martis, uh, who oversees the EMS program. He and I were at all of them, and he, he did as much, if not more, than I did. Well, oh, please convey our thanks to uh, the Deputy sure. Chief uh, for, on, on behalf of the commission. Uh, th there is no question that this is a, a critically important um, uh, process that we've gone through, and hopefully the results will be positive for us. Yep. But thank you for that. Um, any other questions of the chief regarding unfinished business? Here, I'd like yes. to talk to the chief about the uh, training tower that's stalled here, chief. Mm -hmm. What are the chances of getting the tower down at New Haven on a Saturday, say? For the volunteers. To train? Yeah. We do that now. Uh, that's what they do to live burning. So they'll, they'll probably be doing that again here. I'd say in the fall, they'll probably schedule and do that again. So, you know, the, the, the tower down in the Haven um, offers a good opportunity to, to, to conduct our, our burn evolutions and to meet our OSHA requirement for our annual live burns. Um, so that's, that's why we're going to use the New Haven site. But keep in mind, the site that we're talking about building behind here, we're not going to be able to burn in it. But there's so many other things that, that need to get built up to that point. So we're hopeful that that starts to move forward for us soon. Uh, but you will see uh, North Haven volunteers and career likely down in New Haven within the next uh, next six months, at least probably four months. Very good, Chief. Any other questions of the Chief? No. Hearing none, I'll accept the motion to accept the unfinished business report. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Uh, new business of the fire department. So new business. Um, I'm just going to pass out some information that you can take a look through. So the town of North Haven has been approached by a uh, uh, cell phone vendor to put a cell tower. This would be behind the West Ridge Firehouse. I'm not at all looking for... Uh, approval of that project that's that's not what I think we're here for I'm, I'm here simply I have a duty to discuss it with the Commission and to show you where uh, the couple of places they're talking about putting it right now and I think as a fire department we just need to determine if it would impact operations of that fire station or not and, and I think that's that's about all that we're limited to doing um, from this point here it's going to go to the appropriate locations whether that be through local zoning or whether that be through uh, a, a state hearings, uh, it could go a few different directions from here. But I'm being asked right now to at least present it to the fire commission to determine uh, if, if the fire commission feels that where it's proposed to go right now would present any fire department operational issues. Uh, the paperwork you have in front of you, it, there's two places it's been talked about. If you're familiar with the barn that sits behind West Ridge Firehouse, that barn, between the barn and the elementary school, uh, that barn would, it would sit right on the other side of that. Um, to the point where, instead of needing four fences to make a permit around it, it only need three, because a barn would serve as, as one of those sides. Uh, the other place that they've talked about is uh, directly above the retaining wall, which is uh, what's pictured there on the paperwork you have. Um, so, you know, Again, I, this is going to be a very controversial topic that I fully expect it to be. That's why I'm only looking to determine uh, if it impacts our operations. So you're looking at a uh, small access driveway that would go to it for a service truck, and that would come off the department property somewhere there. And the enhancements that we're talking about to, uh, to allow for this. So remember, there's, no, there's currently no volunteers that park back there while they're responding to a call because it's on the furthest side of the building. They either park right in the front or they park along the road going to Ridge Road School. So we won't have an impact there. Uh, there will still be the ability to drive all the way around the fire station, which is what we currently have and, and would continue to need. But it really wouldn't impact anything else back there. Some of the enhancements that we're talking about that would be a benefit at this point, it's being proposed that it's a 115-foot monopole. It would carry uh, the first net AT&T service, which is what fire and police in this area use. So it would have its benefits there to, uh, to help them with our, our cell service. Uh, there's some discussion about, and this is still kind of in the works, but there's some discussion about um, a generator being provided for the tower that would also take care of the fire station itself, 
which is a benefit, and there's some discussion about bringing fiber to the tower and to the station, which is also a benefit. Seeing they're so close to each other, the vendor is, uh, is willing to negotiate those terms. So, you know, we can work out, and there's also a financial incentive that goes to the town, not to the fire department. So I think that's the only thing that I'm here for tonight is to bring it to the commission and, and make you aware of it. Again, I, I don't know what's going to happen from here. I just needed to know if you think it would have any negative impact on the fire department. Chief. Yeah. Mount Sacred Heart has a tower. They get 10000 a month. There's a car place up here. It's a shed. I, I don't know if the, farm, the Grange was in it at one time. Yeah. There's a tower up there right off of 91, mm -hmm. just over the North Haven line. 10000 yeah. a month. So, I mean, we should keep that in mind when yeah. we go to build this new one. Yeah, I don't know where the town um, Board of Finance would want this money to go, but you're right. It stands to be a... a, a well, we should get a bite uh, of the apple. Well, I'm not sure that the fire department will get a bite of the apple, but certainly the town would get uh, yeah. the, the, the um, revenue or the rental revenue uh, from, from that and... Um, you know, indirectly it would assist all departments uh, throughout the town. Uh, but to answer your question um, as to whether or not it will impact our, our services, it appears that it, it, it's at the, the rear of the barn. And um, I mean, based on what I'm seeing in, the, in this photo and, uh, and even the other uh, proposed area, it's well out of the way. So it would not impact the apparatus. Uh, I guess that's a question. Right. It won't impact the apparatus, I'm hopeful, nope. as well as uh, as the parking ability for our volunteers. So uh, in my mind, I don't see any any reason why we wouldn't be able to put it in that location, either or, mm -hmm. um, in my mind. Yeah, the two locations, again, are directly behind the barn yeah. or in that circled area that you have before you. Yeah, but yeah, they're, yeah. they're very close proximity yeah, to each yeah, other. Yeah. Right. I think it's a great. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a revenue generator for the town. It enhances our opportunity as far as fire and police uh, um, cell, cell service is concerned. We potentially will get a generator, which we've been desperately in need of. And if exactly. we could add the fiber, uh, you know, office, fiber I mean, it's, that is just it's a win-win. So it, it, it's a triple win. Yeah, right. Um, a win for the taxpayers. Win for the service for fire and police. Um, and, and certainly uh, the, the generator and the fiber, uh, you know, for the fire station. So, uh, personally, I'm in favor of this here. I don't know any questions regarding... Uh, I'm 100% in favor of it. Mayor? Yes. Zoo? Okay. Joe? Of course. Okay. I think we should be supportive of the process moving forward. Absolutely. Because there's going to be, there's going to be a, a, a fair amount of discussion that takes place from here on. <laughs> and I just think that... Um, this is what the conversation needs to take place. What, what happens from here um, is beyond our control. Well, I think we'll, we'll, we'll be in support of this you know, when, when it comes to a public meeting. Uh, as far as the fire department is concerned, uh, obviously from your standpoint, it doesn't impact uh, operationally. Uh, and um, I think there's nothing but, in this condition, thing, All benefits. Nothing, nothing but benefits to us. So uh, I'm hopeful that this moves forward. Okay. Good. Thank you, Chief. Uh, the good of the fire department. The good of the department, we uh, were planning our initial 10 week CERT training for January 14th. And we, uh, we're beginning to advertise for that now. We, we're hoping it's up before the holidays, but we don't want to uh, conflict too much with some of the holidays that are coming up between now and the year. And January is a good time to, to start this and, and spend the dreary days of winter at a CERT class getting trained. So. We'll, uh, we'll continue to support that, and that's all I have for good of the department. Uh, Chief, one question. Uh, approximately how many participants are in the CERT, on the CERT team at this point? So we need 10 in order to make that class okay. uh, go. We currently have four to six that are interested already, so I don't anticipate we're going to have any issues. Uh, total CERT members that have been trained were probably in the neighborhood of 25, um, 20 to 25. It's a matter of, don't forget that you've been, you may have been trained in CERT, but you don't necessarily be part of the team. Mm -hmm. um, members of the team can kind of come and go depending on, on what's going on in their lives. But, you know, the, the goal of this is to provide, it's twofold, is to provide that, that critical training to, to members of the public that, that want to have it in the event of an emergency in their own neighborhood. And it's also, we hope, that they'll give back and become part of the team. Well, uh, 
uh, I know that you've reported back to this commission um, a number of times that the CERT team had been called out, mm -hmm. uh, you know, frequently uh, since the, the origin of the team in North Haven. And, and certainly they've worked in concert with the Hamden CERT team. Um, and CERT, we're, we're appreciative of, of the CERT um, persons who uh, participate on that team. Um, and I, I would encourage any other residents in town who would wish to participate in that program to contact the chief uh, so that he would be able to pass them on to the appropriate persons um, to participate in this program, this training program. So thanks for bringing this to our attention, chief. Anything else for the good of the department? I see our union presidents here. Any any thoughts or comments? Um, nothing tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Public comments. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to move into executive session. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Any question on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. I'd like to reconvene the Tuesday, October 22nd, uh, 2019, uh, North Asian Fire Commission meeting to order. Uh, are, is there any additional business coming before this commission? I'd like to announce that the next uh, regularly scheduled uh, North Haven Fire Commission meeting will be Tuesday, November 26, 2019 at 6 p.m. Uh, here at the training room at Northeast Company 4, 366 Washington Avenue, North Haven. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourn. Thank you very much. The preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the town of North Haven. Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at nhtv.com.